Well, hey guys, I am sick today, but what we're gonna do to give you a video for this week is I'm gonna give you an excerpt of a video from a series we have going on right now at my paid channel. I don't wanna do the teaser thing. I know that gets a lot of people mad, but this one's gonna have educational value that if you don't wanna watch the whole case study, you don't wanna join Schrodinger's Box Quantum Mechanics for $3.49 measly cents a month, to really learn how to do a lot of this advanced diagnostics. You don't have to, but in this video, you will come away with a better understanding of how to use your test light to look at computer control. So even if you are familiar with uh, that kind of stuff and you don't need the basics with Schrodinger's Box quantum mechanics videos, then uh, you'll at least walk away with hopefully a little bit better information on how to use test light more effectively. So to set up for what you're about to see, we're gonna jump into the middle of a diagnosis I'm doing over on that channel with a car that the owner brought in from a shop that diagnosed the car needs a new PCM and six new ignition coils because of a crank no start situation where the car has multiple ignition codes showing on the PCM. And in the process of doing that, I'm using my test light to look at computer control for the coils. Um, because I'm not feeling 100%, I made a little bit of a mistake. And uh, yes, of course, I'm looking on the ground side of the coil for the computer control ground side switching. But I've got my test light accidentally hooked up to the battery negative. Instead of which should be the battery positive, it makes all the difference in the world in being able to tell uh, whether you've got computer control or whether it looks like the computer is never closing the switch. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why it's essential you have your test light on the correct battery terminal in order to get that reading. So that's what we're gonna take a look at here. Again, you'll walk away with the knowledge after this video if you want to get a lot more in-depth on doing these diagnoses and the basic instruction on electrical and computer diagnostics, then of course you might consider a subscription to the channel. We'll talk about how you can do that in the description underneath this video, but uh, I'll let it go with that. Go ahead and enjoy the video and hope you learn something new. So this is a major, major test here. And look at that. We do have power on that side of the circuit. So now, I'm curious what happens with the engine running. With the engine running, we would see that test light flash. So that's something to keep in mind there. Let's go ahead and just check this one. Same thing. Now this coil does not have a code. This is uh, four, five, six. Number six does not have a code on it. Gonna put that in there. Let's see if we can um, start this coil up real quick. And I'm gonna see if I can get Vicky to help. Okay, for right now, just go ahead and crank it. Go ahead and do that again. All right, so as we see, our light is staying lit here. Let me make sure I'm on the right thing. Go ahead and do it again. All right, stop. Yeah, we're, we're on the ground side and that light is staying lit. We don't have a code on number six either, so that's hard to explain. Um, see if you can keep the engine running. Um, by, by, yeah, um, actually, just go ahead and crank it. I'll keep it running. All right, so there's our engine running. Hopefully my arm's not in the way for you guys here. Oh, we're losing it. That light is staying lit. All right, I wonder if we even have spark on there. So what I'm gonna do Yeah, you see if I disconnect right there, there is a change in the engine, yet, you can go ahead and turn it off, yet somehow our test light is always fully lit, it's not flashing, and I uh, actually have an explanation for that. 
Okay, now why is that? I'm on the ground side. We know there's spark here. We already showed that earlier. We know there's spark here because when I disconnect the coil, we lose the cylinder contribution in the engine. But that light stayed on the whole time. And it makes us think that there isn't ground side switching there. So what kind of sorcery is this that it looks like this computer switch is never closing like this? And my explanation is <clears throat> it's because I'm sick and I'm just not thinking real good here. My test light is connected onto the battery negative. We want to be connected onto the battery positive. Let me go ahead and move the test light onto the battery positive. All right, now I'm on the battery positive. Notice the test light doesn't light, but what this will do is make it so the test light only lights when the switch closes. It's gonna be a lot easier for us to see. All right, let's crank it. See there. Now we have the flashing. Now notice the flashing is pretty dim. And I also have explanation on why it may be a little bit dimmer there and harder to see as well. But uh, another trick we can do, let me do this. I'm gonna go on my ground side here with an LED test light. This is gonna cause a green flash whenever the LED finds the ground. So now when the computer closes that switch, we're gonna really see it pretty easy. All right, just crank it. Look at that. How easy is that to see? Okay, and I also notice now our battery's starting to get really weak here. So uh, what we're gonna do is um, a couple things. I'm gonna go ahead and let the battery charge up. I wanna get these bolts out of here so that we can actually see the spark. And we're gonna go down the line testing both for spark on each of these and for coil control. We know we've got a good one here. We lucked out, by the way. Here, easily accessible in the front of the engine it's gonna let us diagnose this without a scope because uh, otherwise we really would, we either need to take the intake off uh, or we're gonna need a scope to diagnose this. And one thing about this design that I'll talk about is using the scope on this would be actually a lot trickier than other models, I'll explain why. But um, let me charge this battery up and let's talk a little bit here before we move on because we're gonna to have to crank this engine a lot. We need a strong battery. I think it's still not clear to a lot of people why I need my test light connected to the battery positive instead of the negative in order to see the activity with the computer. That, that wouldn't make sense. And uh, so let me explain why that is. Let me draw out this circuit real quick. It takes a lot of evidence before I'm ready to call an engine computer. And uh, so it's very important that we understand how we're using this test light because ultimately I believe we're going to use the test light to make the call that this is going to be not an engine computer. The other thing is if we think about what is involved in how the computer would have to fail in this way. So that would require the diagram and we'll look at that next while our battery is charging. But this is uh, just kind of a real simple diagram of the coil. I want to show you why it's so important you use the test light correctly if you're gonna look for engine control on a ground side switch component like this. Uh, because as we saw, it makes, it makes all the difference in looking at it and going, oh no, there's no switching from the computer. It's always open to clearly seeing the computer is switching. And it all depends where you put your test light. So we've got our 12 volt source here um, I'm going to put the, the battery here, actually. All right, so we've got a battery positive here, and we'll put a battery negative in green here. <clears throat> ultimately, we know this goes to ground, which means ultimately to ground at the battery, ultimately in the computer here. All right, so we've got a fused battery power here. We saw on the wire diagram, this power feed that feeds our coil feeds a lot of other things. It feeds the fuel injectors, it feeds the other coils, feeds the air conditioning system. It branched off to two other locations. Uh, one of them went to the, um, the, the uh, mass airflow sensor, I think it was, and then another location, we didn't even follow it. 
and that one may have branched off even to other locations. But this is a very, very busy circuit. It's also one of the reasons why using a scope would be a challenge, but we'll get to that later. Now, what we've got here is we've got our test light, and I'm gonna draw the test light in uh, black. All right, so the mistake that I made, I took my test light, connected my test light up to the battery negative, and of course, we wanna go on the ground side of the coil here. I think I'm gonna draw this so that we can see the connector. All right, so this, just simplify it a little bit more. We see the connector here. We could disconnect the, the coil out of the connector here because we're back probing at the connector. Now, I'm hoping you'll agree with me that the dumbest thing I, <coughs> sorry, the dumbest thing I could have done if I was uh, sick with dementia as opposed to an upper respiratory infection would be to put my test light here. All right, there's my test light there. I'm on ground. Of course, the test light's gonna light. And we know from our basic electrical, whether this switch is open or whether this switch closes because we are in front of the load, that test light would light no matter what. It would always be lit whether this switch opens, whether this switch closes. We're always gonna have 12 volts on this side of the coil uh, in our ignition coil. So that would be a mistake. All right, I correctly probed back here on the ground side of the coil. Now, I'm on battery negative. We've got our battery positive coming through the coil through here. So we've got, from our basic electrical, 12 volts anywhere along this circuit, right? Even up to the end of the switch. So of course, my test light here is going to light. Now, when the switch closes, we now change everything. With that switch closed like that, we now have our voltage drop across this coil. That means we're gonna have zero volts everywhere. Well, if we have zero volts here and my test light is connected to ground, the test light would go out, but it didn't. We never saw it go out. Why is that? Well, let's think about the reason that that is. The reason is because if we look in our normal state here, the reason is because normally for the overwhelming vast majority of time, relatively speaking, that switch is open. So with that switch open, of course, we've got 12 volts everywhere, 12 volts here. I'm on the ground. So our light is always lit. And then it's got to wait for the cylinders to fire and the, the one coil fires and the other coil fires and the other coil fires. And then this one does, this one fires. And for that brief, brief, just like, like 20 milliseconds, maybe probably not even that on this engine. And, and that gets to another rabbit hole, but we'll go there. Um, but for a very, very brief period of time, now that switch closes. Just for a brief second, that switch closes. Brings our voltages to zero. Test light goes out, but we don't see it because by the time that, that bulb even starts to cool down and turn off, the switch opened again before the test light even had a chance to react, before our eyes would even see it. And now we're back to 12 volts on everything, even at our switch. And the test light's back lit up again. We, we, we never, it happened so fast we never even saw it. Now on this particular car, excuse me a second, now in this particular car, I think we have an added complication in that when the switch closes, I don't think it's just this regular dwell time where it closes to energize the coil and then it opens up. The engine here is a Ford engine and I think, I may be wrong about this and, and maybe we'll look at it later with a scope. I think this is a multi-spark system. You'll see this on some Ford engines where instead of 
closing the switch, energizing the coil, opening the switch, you get your big collapse, you get your spark. We talked about that in the ignition series. I think this switch closes and opens three times very, very quickly and creates three sparks. I may be wrong about that on this engine, but there are some that do that. And that would even further sort of exacerbate this situation where, where you are not going to see that test light turn off. So what's the solution to it? The solution is to move your test light to battery positive because now you're doing the opposite. Now instead of looking for the test light to go out when you have the computer control, you're, you get your test light to turn on when there's computer control. And that is a lot easier for your eyes to catch. It's a lot easier for the test light to show. So let's look at what happens when we do that. So we've got our same situation here, except now we're gonna take the test light off the ground. As soon as we take the test light off the ground, it's gonna go out, obviously. We're gonna relocate this over to my battery positive. So now we've got the test light on the battery positive. Is the test light gonna light? No, it's not because our switch is open. Remember our switch is open here. So we've got 12 volts everywhere along the circuit here. All right, so we're on 12 volts. We're on the power. So we're measuring 12 volts to 12 volts, of course, there's no ground, the, the test light's not gonna light. The light by default stays off. So now we're cranking the engine, you got one of the coils firing, the next coil's firing, the next coil's firing. Now it's this guy's turn. When this guy's turn happens, the switch closes. When the switch closes, now we of course complete our circuit. After the load, we get our voltage drop zero volts everywhere here. Our test light, however, is on battery positive. So we've got 12 volts right here at the very tip of our test light. That's now finding your ground. The light turns on. And in the case of the LED, it'll turn on really, really quickly. And we'll be able to see it a lot clearer. Plus the green light, I think, kind of helps on my LED test light. So that light turns on but only for, again, the same brief, brief amount of time. But our eyes are able to catch that. It's a lot easier to see a light turn on for a split second than to turn off for a split second. So in that split second, now of course switch opens again. That means we're back to 12 volts everywhere. Test light is on 12 volts, 12 volts touching to 12 volts, the light goes out. Repeating that over and over, we see those flashes much easier so we can ensure that we can make the correct diagnosis. So that's how important that is. All right, if this was a component that was the other way around, if this was a component that the switch was normally closed all the time and then it opens briefly, well, then we would want our test light over on the battery negative in that case. So. You want to know your circuit, know your system so that you set up your test light properly. We've got it set up properly. Um, now that uh, we understand that, let's look at what we're expecting to see when we test these coils. Because for this to be a computer failure, you got, you got to have a lot of things going on. For, for this type of failure where we've got multiple ignition codes, let's kind of take a look at that and see what you think.